Kerry, thank you for joining me. Could you please start by telling me about your background and experience as a patient? So I think everyone is born a patient, and I think everyone dies a patient, unfortunately. But the gray area in between is where people, if they're not actively managing a chronic condition, they kind of forget that they are, you know, still a patient. But I became an actual patient, I think, when I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes just before I started second grade. And I've been managing that condition for 25 years. How did you become to be so heavily involved with social media? Well, so I grew up with diabetes, and when I was growing up, I went to a diabetes camp for kids who had diabetes. So I had this little group of people who got what it was like to live with this condition. But um, around high school and then college, and then just after college, I didn't know anyone else who had diabetes. And I felt very alone and really isolated with this health condition. So I decided on the advice of my, advice of my, uh, my now husband to start a blog. And he was like, you know, you can write a blog, you can connect with other people. And so I, I did, and I put this first post out in May of 2005, and at that point my mom and my boyfriend were reading it, but within just a matter of weeks there were all these other people who also had diabetes who had found me, and it was like, it was like finally finding the community that I've been looking for since camp. So it was just, it's, it's nice to kind of reach out and look for those people and to actually find them, and to, to really start that conversation with people who, who get what you're living with. What do you see to be the biggest challenge for patients newly diagnosed with diabetes? Well, I think it depends when you're diagnosed. So I was diagnosed as a kid, and I think the challenge for my family was my mother and father learning how to manage this condition because I was so little, I didn't know what was going on. It was their job to take care of me. It was when I became a little older and started to assume my own care and responsibility for my own disease that I had to educate myself on what that actually required and what I needed to do to kind of move forward in good health. But I think when you're diagnosed as an adult, it's entirely different. You remember the before. You know what life was like before diabetes. I have no recollection of that. But I think that's a distinct lifestyle change when you can, you know, you remember going out and not taking insulin before having your meals and then all of a sudden having to do it. So I think when you're diagnosed really determines what kind of care that you need, what kind of support. In what ways have you engaged with pharma? Well, since I started writing uh, my blog, Six Until Me, I just wrote for myself. But after a couple of years, there were some medical device companies that were really interested in partnering with patients. So currently, I have a sponsorship agreement with Animus Corporation. They're a J&J branch, and they make the insulin pump that I use. So it's a really weird arrangement because most companies don't want to partner with bloggers. They think we're scary and that we're going to say these awful things and use all these off-label uses and advocate in ways that make them uncomfortable, but there's something about that partnership. I trust them. They trust me to speak on behalf of their product in a, an appropriate way. And I, I don't know, it's just nice that they feel confident partnering with an actual patient who is using their actual product and telling true anecdotes of what it's like to live with diabetes and use their device uh, in a way that, that touches their target market, but also touches the greater diabetes community because I don't know, it gives them something that they can identify with. It doesn't just seem like a marketing scheme. It's actually real. Do you think there are ways in which pharma could better interact with patient groups? I think it would be great if pharma just would interact with patient groups. They're making devices and drugs that we take and we use every single day. So if they would just start by listening to us, maybe lurking on, oh, lurking sounds creepy, I don't mean it in a creepy way, but like if they would read patient blogs, if they would look at these Facebook pages, if they would just tune into the conversations that are happening in social media, I, mean, I think that's a great first start because then they can really get a sense for what their target market, their patients, their consumers, whatever they want to call us, what real people are actually saying. And then from there, I mean, maybe there will be a comfort level of talking to us instead of just listening to us. And there could just be some great dialogue between pharma and patients. I think that pharma is nervous about being responsible for what they hear. And, and I'm hoping that there will be some kind of confidence between pharma and patients where they can feel like they can listen and engage with us without all this regulatory and, and fear of being reported or whatever they're fearing. It would just be good to have these conversations actually happening because these silos need to be broken down and we actually need to talk to one another. And that's, I think that it will improve patient health outcomes and I think that's the goal for everybody, especially the patients. In what ways are the needs of patients with diabetes currently not being met and what can pharma do better to meet these needs? Well, I think there's a huge focus on a diabetic patient's A1C level or their blood sugars or all these numbers, these really concrete, quantifiable things. But I think what's really missing is support for that psychosocial aspect of diabetes, that emotional health. I mean, you're living with a chronic illness, so when you get up every single morning, your responsibility is to manage your diabetes. And it seems like it's something that's easy to do on paper. You know, test your blood sugar, take your insulin, eat well, exercise, blah, blah, blah. What gets tough 
is keeping the motivation to go forward and do that every day, or to not deal with depression, which is often a, a say a side effect of living with diabetes, but it comes part and parcel with a lot of chronic illnesses because the emotional burden can be pretty heavy. So if pharma companies and any company could help kind of support what patients need emotionally, be it through support groups or by advocating for patients to connect with other patients, uh, reading patient blogs, making that part of the prescription, I think that could help balance you know, that focus of it's not just your numbers, it's about the whole person. I really think that that could play a huge role in patient health. Kerry, thank you very much for your insights today. Well, thanks for having me.